Towsel man has lost $10,000 after scammers stole his phone number, illegally transferred it to another device and then used it to withdraw from his bank account. This elaborate con is not uncommon and has telcos on alert. Let's bring in scam victim Andrew Ryder in Townsville and today tech expert Trevor Long in Sydney. Good morning to you both. Andrew, this all happened to you in, in just 24 hours. What were the signs that something was suspicious? Sarah, I was contacted by one of my banks to suggest that someone was trying to impersonate me. Uh, I was put on alert then, received some SMSs from both Telstra and uh, my Optus company to say that they were changing some of my personal details, which I hadn't requested. Mm -hmm. And then within a few hours, they'd ported my phone number to another device. Whilst I'd rung them up and said, no, I did not want this to happen, they still went ahead with that request. Subsequently, he was able to defraud the bank of $10,000 in a very short space of time because he had the multi-factor authentication. Did you get any money back? Fortunately, I've got one of the better banks and uh, they looked at it and said, look, this is clearly a concern here. It wasn't you. Mm. And they have returned all the money, which I thought was uh, over and above. Uh, and obviously, I could have waited another two months for the investigation to take place. But they were uh, very good and returned that within a few days. That is unusual. Yeah, well, it's such a relief, though, isn't it? I mean, Trev, this is a different kind of scam, isn't it? This isn't one that somebody has unwittingly been involved in. No, that's right. This is, he's done nothing wrong. He's not clicked the link in an email, but he's essentially the victim of identity fraud. This is the biggest problem we've got going forward. With all those data breaches we've had, your information, your identity is so much easier to steal. They steal your identity, they log into your email, they become you, they reset passwords, and in this case, they log into your telco account, become you, and take over your account and your phone number. Oh, just um, talking to Brooke then. Brooke just leaned across the desk, um, guys, and mm. said, look, this happened to me. Uh, yeah, it happened to me once. They stole my mail, so they'd had enough information to call the phone company and transfer my number to another phone, which means then they can get access to the bank. They closed off my email, wow. all of that mm. within a few hours. And the only indication that I had that something was wrong was that I stopped getting text messages, and I am quite popular, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was alarmed when nothing was coming. Trevor, through. if you don't have any wow. indication apart from that, um, and what hope do you have? Look, I think the thing here is there's always little tiny hints. You'll start getting emails that say someone's tried to do this, someone's mm. tried to reset mm. something. You need to take those emails, any communication seriously, but obviously don't click on links in those emails. Follow them up with the telco or the bank. Now, that's the best you can do here is get on it quickly with the companies involved because identity fraud is exactly what the scammers want to do right now to access our accounts, our phones mm. and everything in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. It's troubling, isn't it? Um, Andrew, any lessons for you? I mean, Brooke just uh, also said, I mean, if your mail's mm. getting stolen, that could be a key yeah. giveaway. It happened so quickly that uh, the telcos were the ones that released the information, which is more than disappointing given that they've been under the spotlight about their own security. Uh, I had pressed on nothing. I actually phoned them and said, I don't want this to go ahead. But they still uh, pursued the matter. And within a matter of hours, I lost contact with my phone. <laughs> uh, the, the sad part about it is I've been onto the telcos for the last eight days, last two weeks, and they're very recalcitrant and trying to do anything. They're more about reputation protection than looking after the customer, which is a great disappointment. I put it down to their keen on supporting themselves. And if they actually had face-to-face -face, uh, transfers in the in the uh, branches rather than electronic transfers, we might have a chance of pulling this up. But they just don't want to put the money into staff in the uh, in the branches so that when you transfer a sim, you do it face-to-face. -face. Um, it's fantastic. Great warning uh, mm. for everyone out there.